with Statistics Learn or Lose, please welcome Andrew Coates. So my first memory growing up was uh, sitting under the clothesline while my mother was hanging out socks. She had 10 red socks and two pairs of blue socks and she asked me questions like, what are the chances I'm going to pull out a red sock next to hang on the line? Now, for most people this ends up with uh, fairly permanent damage and I have to say it was for me too. <laughs> Uh, when I go up an escalator, for example, now, I'm not thinking, oh, it's a long escalator. I'm thinking, well, what's the formula for working out how many steps go past the top if I'm going at twice the speed of the escalator? Now, you have to admit, that's a fairly weird thing to do. But what it does give me is a bunch of clarity. I get to think about things in a really clear way because I understand not what the, the way the problem's presented, but the way the solution should, should happen. And this is really what I want to try and help you with tonight. I'm going to talk really fast for a whole lot of this stuff. And at the end, there are probably two things I want you to remember. And I'll tell you about those as we go through. But most of you will have heard of the Monty Hall problem. Three doors. I'm a game show host. There's a, there's a car behind one of the doors. There's two goats, one behind each of the other doors. You choose one door. I show you a goat. You get to choose whether you want to actually swap doors or not. And you say yes or no. And most people say, I don't care. It's a 50-50 chance. But in fact, it's a two in three chance that if you swap doors, you'll win. This is one of those really counterintuitive things. And it's... The, the, the thing is, if you don't believe me, look it up. If the thing is, <laughs> the clarity that you need is to understand the problem is not about cars and goats, it's about doors. It's the, what the, the, the question is, the game show host, do you want to pick one door or do you want to pick two doors? Because that's really the question you're getting. One door, you get to pick first. If you, ch if you change, you've actually picked two doors. And that's, the, that's clarity for you. That's one of those things. <laughs> so... Large numbers are one of the things that, hap that matter in statistics. So here's, here's a, a set of, uh, of dice rolls. I, I rolled a dice a thousand times. That's the sort of thing I do. I rolled a dice a thousand <laughs> times, and I've got the average of the dice. And you'll see that over time, the average gets to the very much the same thing. Large numbers make a big difference. And so when you're thinking about whether things are rare or not, a coin, a coin toss is a good way of thinking about this. Yeah, co tossing one coin is you know, easy to do. Tossing 10 coins, you've got a, 10 heads is about, uh, is exactly one in two to the 10 chance of getting 10 heads. So I did that, again, uh, in the interest of research. Research, I tossed 10 coins 10,000 times, uh, and this is the result. And, and so I'll blow it up a little bit. Each one of those is a head tail, head tail, head tail, head tail. Each one of those uh, represents what goes on. And so the interesting thing was I had a look at what the results were, and strangely, I did throw 10 heads. In fact, I threw it a number of times. And this is the really key point. Not whether something is unusual, but whether you do it often enough to observe it. I, th I threw 10 heads 12 times. But I also threw a bunch of other things as well that looked really interesting. I threw 10 tails, I threw head tail, head tail, head tail. The key is that when you do something often enough, unusual stuff will inevitably happen. And that leads to this really next important point. Right? This, is the, this, this is one of the key things that I want to leave you with tonight. One of the two key things. <laughs> Gamblers lose. And it's not just they lose, they always lose. It might be eventually but they always, always lose. And the corollary of this is, of course, that casinos always win. Okay, and we'll get, to the other, we'll get to the other major point right at the end. Now, sometimes you'll see this, uh, particularly with pharmaceutical companies, they want to make sure that the, you're using their drug, and so they do a bunch of studies, and they get a p-value, which means there's a one in 20 chance that this thing could have only happened by chance, uh, and they say that's a really good thing. But you know what? They probably have done 20 studies and only have published one of them, the one in 20 that was... And this is something you need to be careful of. It's called publication bias. And you need to be aware of this kind of stuff when you're reading these sorts of things. Here's another example. I generated a bunch of data that I thought well, was really interesting and I looked at for some patterns and I found a number of places where there was no data and I thought, wow, why is there no data? And I performed some hypotheses and started doing some research and, and, and the key thing here is that when you look at how I generated the data, this is really exactly what happened. I generated random numbers for the X and Y value each time. This is what's known as this Texas sharpshooter fallacy, where you shoot a whole bunch of uh, bullets at the, at, the, at, the tar at the side of a barn and then put, paint the target where most of the bullets are. This is, this is one of the things that happens all the time in statistics you've got to watch out for. Often we hear about hard work and persistence making all the difference. When you hear a, a, um, a, a, an actor interviewed or a musician interviewed, they say, hard work and persistence is what made me great. And so you might be tempted to think that that's what you need to do, work hard and be persistent. But we didn't ever hear the interviews with all the actors that failed or the musicians that failed. They probably worked hard and were persistent too. 25%, there's a 25% chance that no one in this room's got a birthday today, but there's a 100% chance that there are two people in this room who share a birthday. Isn't that cool? Listen, if you do find out other person, come and see me, I'll buy you each a drink. All right? It's a great idea. And the reason this happens is because, you know, I got two up the back there already by the look of it. The reason this happens is because by the time each person of the first 366 has got a separate birthday, the 367th person has got to share a birthday. This is known as the pigeonhole effect. And so, again, this is another one of those things where large numbers make a big difference. Now, I don't expect you to have 
listened even that much to me this evening or even especially remembered. But one thing I do want you to do is go and get this book, Struck by Lightning, uh, by a guy named Jeffrey Rosenthal. Now, this is a great book and it teaches you about the probability perspective. This, if, there's, if there's one thing I want to leave you with, though, it's A, get the book, but B, this is the final thing, that lotteries are attacks on people who are no good at maths. And so thank you all. Thank you all for, for, uh, for funding.